Today I'm going to show you how to create online training courses using PowerPoint and an authoring tool called iSpring Suite, which can be installed as an add-in into PowerPoint. You can use it to create things like new hire orientation, compliance training, software tutorials, any type of e-learning course that you need to create. With iSpring Suite solutions, you can include sophisticated interactive elements, quizzes, dialogue simulations, all of those into your course very easily. And when you're ready to publish, you can publish to an LMS system, a website, or even a YouTube channel. I want to thank iSpring Solutions for sponsoring this video and for offering a great tool that allows us to create professional e-learning courses right from PowerPoint. I have an affiliate link to iSpring in the description below this video. Be sure and click on that link and sign up. You can download and try it for free. Let's check it out. When you click on the link in the description below this video, you'll land on this page where you can download iSpring Suite for free. Keep in mind you do have to have a desktop version of PowerPoint running on your machine in order to install it successfully. Once you install iSpring Suite, you'll have access to the iSpring Suite app on your computer. Here's where you can launch new courses, create quizzes, simulations, different screencasts and interactions that you want to keep in a library and you may want to add these to several different courses that you may create. One neat thing is also the books. You have the ability to create an ebook out of any PDF, Word, or PowerPoint document and I'll show you what that looks like in a little while. The next thing you have access to is iSpring Space. iSpring Space is a cloud workspace for course authoring and collaboration. So you can save your courses and eBooks out here for other teammates who may want to add content or collaborate on your files. And finally, after installing, you'll notice when you open up PowerPoint that you have an iSpring Suite tab up here at the top. When you click on it, you can access this ribbon with all the different authoring tools that are available in iSpring Suite. Now, if you already have an existing slide deck that you want to use as the basis of your course, all you have to do is open that slide deck in PowerPoint and click on your iSpring Suite tab, and you'll have access to insert quizzes, interactions, different slide templates or characters, anything that you want to add to enhance your existing presentation. But if you want to start from scratch, all you have to do is come up here to the content library and click on slide templates. Here you'll notice that you have lots of different themes that you can choose from. So if you scroll through and see one that you like, you can start inserting the different slides that you want to, including a course title, maybe a main menu, and then some different slide layouts that you have access to. I went ahead and inserted the urban theme and added several of these slides just to create a sample presentation that we can look at today. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of here now. Now the first thing I want to show you real quickly is how you can add audio and or video narration to your slides. Come up here to the narration area and click on manage narration. And this will open up the iSpring narration editor. If you are planning to record audio on any of your slides, I highly recommend that you use an external microphone that you can plug into your computer. This is going to sound much better and have a better audio quality for your learners than if you just use the built-in microphone on your computer. I have a list of gear that I use in the description below this video. Be sure and check that out. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a question in the comments. Once you record an audio or video clip, you have the ability to edit it so you can trim the beginning or ending if you need to. You also have the ability to import video that you might have already recorded into your slide and place it accordingly. Once you're done recording your audio and or video, you can click save and close and it will automatically publish onto your slides. I'm going to go ahead and close out now. The next tool I want to show you how to use are the interactions that you can include in your course through iSpring Suite. If you come up here to the insert area and click on interaction, and then I'm going to click here on new interaction. And now a window pops up with lots of different interaction types that I can choose from. Now, if I were to build one of these types of interactions within PowerPoint by itself using just animations and buttons and links, it would be quite complex and take a lot of time. But with this library, you can select different items and actually create them very easily. I've gone ahead and included a couple of these sample interactions just to show you what they'll look like in our sample new leader onboarding training. I included the steps and the hotspot. So let's take a look at what these look like. All right, I'm going to scroll down to the slide where I've inserted my interaction. So I'm going to select the slide and here's a placeholder that says click on the interaction button to edit this object. So I'm going to come up and click on interaction. From here, I was able to select the image I wanted to include over here. I just clicked on change from file and I selected my sample building map and I clicked open. 
Then over here on the left, I was able to edit my hotspots. I added one for the Human Resources Building, where new leaders will enroll in their benefits, the IT office, where they'll get their ID badge, and the front office, where they'll meet for their facility tour. Let's take a look at what this actually looks like. We can come up here to the Publish area and click on Preview. The preview is nice because it shows what it'll actually look like to users who are going through the training. So if they mouse over one of the hotspots and then click on it, it will pop up the information that they may be looking for. So they can hover and click and access the information. Or if they simply click Next, it will navigate them through the interactions. You also have the ability to see what this looks like for users who may be doing the training on a mobile device. All right, I'm gonna close out of here. Now let's close out and take a look at the step interaction. Here's my placeholder for the step interaction that's in my course, and I'm gonna click on interaction so I can edit it. In this interaction, I'm able to add different steps that the learners, when they click on them, they will see this information. So I was able to add this content onto my slides here. If I want to add a step, I can click on add a step and then type in my new step. If I need to reorder steps, I can drag and drop them in the right place so I can move them up or down. If I want to customize this a little bit further, I can come up and click on colors. And this opens up a window where you can drop down the color scheme and hover over the different options to see what the differences might be. When you see one that you like, just select it and you can click apply and close. When you're done adding your steps, you can always come over here to the preview option to see what this will look like. So users who are on a desktop are able to click on the different steps and move through the different instructions. And on a mobile device, they're able to click on the different steps as they move through your training. You do have some further properties that you can edit. For example, if I click on properties, I can change the position of the steps if I want those to appear on the bottom or the top. I have some different options that I can play around with. If you decide to make a change, all you have to do is click apply and close. All right, I'm gonna close out of this editor window. Now that we've added some interactions into our course, the next thing I wanna show you is how to use the quiz maker. I'm gonna come down here to the slide where I inserted a quiz. Let's go ahead and click on the quiz button and I'll show you how you can create questions and edit your quiz. The iSpring quiz maker allows you to add several different types of questions into your quiz. If you come up here to question and drop down, you'll see all the different types of questions that you can include in your quiz. You've got true false, a multiple response, multiple choice, matching, lots of different options that you can choose from. Once you select the type of question you want to include, you can edit and customize it. Down here, I've included a matching question. I entered the information here for my matching question. And then down here, I listed my items and the correct match. If I need to delete an item, I can click the X to delete. And if I wanna add a new item, I can come down here and type to add a new item. Now down here under feedback and branching, I'm able to personalize the messages that users will get if they answer correctly for this question or if they answer incorrectly. I also have some options over here to shuffle answers. I can limit the time to answer the question and even select the number of attempts that the user has to answer the question correctly. Over here, I included a true false question where I programmed the correct answer as true. And then I modified and personalized the responses that the users will get when they answer the question correctly or if they answer incorrectly. Finally, I customized the quiz results. Here you can change the message that the users will receive if they pass or fail the quiz. Once you've built all of your questions in the quiz maker, you can click on preview. In the preview, you can actually go through each question and make sure that everything looks correct. And when you're done, you can click on view results. And this is what your learners will see when they pass the test. Again, if you wanna see how this looks on the mobile device, you can click there and see how the user experience will look for mobile users. I'm gonna close out and let's go back to our presentation.
The next authoring tool I want to show you how to use is in the content library. It's the characters. So I'm going to scroll down to the slide in the last slide in my deck where I have a congratulations and notice that I have a character here. Let's say I want to change this image out. All I have to do is come up to the content library and click on characters. And then the content library will pop up and allow you to search for different types of characters that you may want to include in your training. You can scroll through and pick. I have a few up here that I've looked at, so I'm going to click on this one. And when I find an image that I want to use to replace or include in my training, all I have to do is select that image and click on insert. Now, just like in PowerPoint, where you would edit an image, if you want to delete another image, you just select and hit delete. And then you can select another image, resize it by dragging, and then you can move your image around and place it where you want to within your presentation. Once you're done creating all of the slides for your course, you can come up and preview the entire course. Come up to the publish area and click on preview. Depending on how large your course is in terms of content, if you include a lot of video, audio, or interactions, it may take some time to generate the preview. Once the preview is ready, you're able to actually preview the entire course. If you had audio or video narration, it would show up on each slide and you can click through and see the navigation experience that your users will have down here at the bottom. And then you can come down to your interactions and see how those will work. Let's click on slide number eight where we had the hotspot and let's hover over this area. We've got our human resources. When we click, it says enroll in benefits here. Get your ID badge here and meet for your facility tour here. So this does work exactly like we previewed and how we built. You do have the option of going in and changing some of the colors of the hotspots. So the great thing about previewing is if you have any final changes that you want to make, you can preview to see what it'll look like and go back and make any changes that you want to before you publish. Let's go ahead and check out the quiz. And let's fill in our quiz. And we'll continue. And let's say we say false here by accident. You'll see the message pop up that they did not choose the correct response and to please try again and that they have one attempt. And we can view our results. Once you've previewed your course and everything looks just right, then we're able to publish. Let's go ahead and close out of the preview. And we're ready to publish. Come up to the publish area and click on publish. Here we have several different options that we can publish. We can actually publish a file to our computer. We can publish to iSpring Space where we can collaborate with others on our team. We can publish to iSpring Learn, which is iSpring's learning management system, or we can publish to a third party LMS system if we have that set up. We also have the option of publishing to a YouTube channel. So once you're ready to publish, select the area where you wanna publish and click on publish. Now let's go out to iSpring Space and I'll show you where I've saved my sample course. Once you click publish, your course will appear out here for iSpring Space. Here you can access it, open it back up and edit it as needed. And one last thing I wanted to show you is how the eBooks work. Remember when we looked at the iSpring app and I mentioned that there was an area down here that you can create eBooks out of PDFs, Word documents, or PowerPoint. All you have to do is click on that Select a PDF document to import, click on open. Your file will open up in iSpring Flip where you can then preview and publish your document. Let me show you what that looks like. And here is my flip book that users can flip through if they're on a desktop or if they're on a mobile device. Then all they have to do is swipe and they can flip through your PDF document on their phone. Now that you're ready to create your own professional e-learning course, don't forget to sign up for iSpring using my affiliate link in the description below this video and you can try it for free. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to like it. You can subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Be sure and visit my website, SharonSmithHR.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.